Hello, Bob. Hello, Tom. What's up today, Bob? I'm running some performance tests, Tom. Oh, excellent. And what are the results? Not good, Tom. Not good. Oh. Hmm. What can we do to track down the problem, Bob? Hmm? Well, we can use Perfcake. It's pretty easy to use. Even you could use it. Oh, unbelievable. Show me. <laughs> OK, so for the beginning, Actually, I am not Tom, and this is not Bob. This is Pavel, and I'm Martin. And we would like to show you something about uh, Perfcake. Uh, is there anybody who <coughs> was on our presentation at Linux Alt? Hands up. OK. Uh, if you missed the first presentation, this was the first public presentation of Perfcake. Uh, later, there are links in those slides, so uh, you can find it. It's uh, online. You, you can find the slides and uh, play the video as well. Unfortunately, it's in Czech only, but we are preparing subtitles for that. Uh, there were mentioned some, some basics about performance testing and what we try to achieve with Perfcake. And today, we would like to uh, show you some uh, more practical demonstration. So, what is Perfcake? This is the definition, definition from our website. Uh, it's a lightweight performance testing tool and a load generator with the aim to be minimalistic, easy to use, provide stable results, have minimum influence on the measured system, be platform independent, use component design, allow high throughput, uh, allow high throughput, all the cool stuff you can imagine. We try to uh, avoid the mistakes that some competing tools had. And this was actually the reason why we uh, started Perfcake. So just give it a try, and soon you'll be loving it. Now, back to Bob's results. What was wrong here? Uh, Bob ran some performance test, and he measured the uh, throughput uh, in time. He started generating the load, and the test went fine, 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 until some moment in time uh, where the performance dropped down. So what can be the root cause of uh, such a problem? Do you have any ideas? Any tips? Memory, Memory leak, OK. Some resource starvation. Resource starvation. This is exactly what we have listed here. <laughs> uh, Bob was testing their new company application that uh, uses database to store the data. And uh, not many attributes in such a performance test change over time. <coughs> so the application is still the same. 
the test is still the same, the message that is sent to the system is still the same. What can basically change is the amount of data in database. So there can be some poor schema design like missing indexes or the database got full. Or there can be a possible um, memory leak. So let's try to investigate uh, those things first. Uh, I would like to show you uh, what was the Bob scenario, how Bob ran the performance test using Perfcake. Uh, Perfcake is driven by so-called scenario. Scenario is an XML file where you define your performance test. Uh, so that's, now uh, let's walk through the steps uh, that Bob had, had to do. First, he started the XML file. He wanted to run some performance test. He wanted it to uh, take some time and uh, to use some uh, or multiple threads to contact the measured application. So he started writing the scenario, an ordinary XML file with some uh, namespace. He added a generator, default message generator. This is a typical stuff. It's almost in every perfect scenario. Uh, he wanted to have the number of threads configurable from the command line. Perfcake is command line tool. So he added some property here with some default value. Uh, his uh, test was time driven. This, this means that he wanted the test to run, let's say, 10 seconds, one minute or so. Uh, again, this is configurable from the command line. And he wanted uh, each message sent to the measured system to have a unique identifier. So he enabled this in here. Uh, then he wanted to send HTTP put requests. Uh, the application has a REST interface, so he decided to communicate with the application through this REST uh, interface. He added HTTP sender. The target is the location of the application of the REST interface, and he configured the method to be put. Quite easy so far. Uh, then he needs to define the request that is sent to the application. We call it messages in Perfcake. Uh, it doesn't matter much if you call it a request or message, it's still the same. So the message is uh, stored in the file Mongo test XML. It's called Mongo because the application stores the data in uh, Mongo database, so uh, we will see later. And he had to set the content type to text XML for the REST interface to accept it. Then he prepared the message with lo which looks like that. Uh, the application is simple application for registering uh, users or, or maintain some list of name, email, and phone number. It's a, a demo application for JBoss application server, in fact. Slightly modified to use the MongoDB backend. Uh, now the most interesting part of uh, Perfcake scenario is the reporting stuff. He configured a reporter that reports average throughput of the application. That means the number of, of uh, requests it is possible to, uh, it's able to uh, handle uh, in time per one second, actually. He configured some destinations, which means where the, uh, uh, where the results are reported. First one is console destination. Each second there, be a, there will be a, uh, line that reports current uh, throughput. And CSV destination, it's the same. Uh, CSV is a comma separated value file. You may know it. It's uh, used here because it's quite easy to import it as a spreadsheet in some office suite or so. And in the name of the file, he used uh, properties again. Uh, these are properties that uh, are automatically prefilled by Perfcake, and it uh, allows him to run the scenario multiple times and do not override the results, because here is the timestamp, which is unique for each test run. Uh, so Pavel will show us the first demo. Uh, he would like to try the database directly uh, to find out whether the database is the root cause of the performance degradation we saw at the beginning in the results. Uh, here, 
We will demonstrate how to write a custom sender for PerfCake, which is an extension uh, that allows you to connect PerfCake or uh, to run a performance test of uh, almost anything uh, you develop to show you that it's possible to test even something like MongoDB directly. <coughs> it does not matter in what language uh, your system is written because PerfCake uses uh, any type of communication you develop in your sender. It can be simply sockets or HTTP or even <coughs> some language specific things like Java messaging API or so. So he will show us the development of a custom sender. Uh, we will start with some dummy sender because uh, there is not enough time to deal with uh, the MongoDB API. And we have the MongoDB uh, sender prepared already, so we will see the source code as well. And Pavel will run the, the test. So if you can start. OK, thank you. So uh, to write a custom sender or custom uh, component, which can be basically sender, uh, generator, reporter, or destination, or uh, any other component that we might uh, add in the future. Uh, we call it a plugin into a uh, perfcake. So, first uh, we just create a, a simple Maven project that we will use to build the plugin. And then we deploy it into PerfCake and write a scenario that uses this sender and uh, run it. Well, on GitHub, we have a project uh, with plugins where you can find a plugin template. Or so, yeah. so it's easy so, to start. So, so we start with, uh, we have some uh, template prepared, as Martin mentioned. So we start uh, just by copying the template. So we would create some cool sender. Everybody can see the font, or should I should I increase the size? Tak to už to zvěc, tam za Rusy nějak čukali. Control plus. Nejde nám plus. Okay. <laughs> ah. It's better. Okay. So as you can see it's it's a simple simple Maven project with just source file uh, prepared to Java code and the test. And to uh, start with the pl uh, plugin we just need to modify to the POM XML. We need to specify the plugin name. It would be cool sender. The version of the plugin, which can be anything. So let's start with one snapshot. And we need to specify a perfcake version for which this plugin is intended. So we have, uh, now I have uh, installed uh, uh, PerfCake to a snapshot from development version because number two wasn't released yet. So we use this version. Sorry. That's it. Oh, thank you. So that's pretty much it. So now we can uh, we can import this project into an IDE. I use Eclipse, so let's use it. Yeah. And now we can start developing our own sender. So we create a new, new class that we call a cool sender. Uh, we provide some package like arc pool or something like those. It's, it doesn't matter really. But what is important is that this uh, sender uh, should uh, extend 
a prepared uh, abstract sender from PerfK uh, that uh, we, we, what is that? What it is doing? It do some stuff. Uh, yeah, the, for the you. fact is that uh, all the extensions uh, have uh, a well-defined interface. So actually, it's sufficient to extend or implement an interface. But there is a lot of useful, useful stuff in the abstract sender, main, abstract sender mainly because of reporting. So it's easier to start with that. Yeah, we so recommend it. So we have everything prepared. Yeah. So as you can see, uh, all you need to do is to implement those uh, three methods. There are some, some method in it, which is for initiating the sender which is basically called once uh, be, uh, before the actual test is uh, executed. The same is about close, but it is called after. It is intended to be to initiate, initialize some connections or uh, some resources that, that it uses and close it in the close method. And the most important thing is to implement the actual sending mechanism the algorithm of this sender. So it is for this is the do send method. Is it? Oh, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. uh, the method do send uh, does not need to be thread safe because uh, of the inner architecture of perf cake. Uh, it is guaranteed that each sender, it's each instance of a sender is used uh, only uh, only by one thread at the same time. So you don't have to worry uh, about uh, things of synchronization or stuff like that. So you don't need to care about it. And if the test runs multiple threads, uh, there is a pool of senders, and they are used uh, wisely to uh, generate the load. Yeah. What I'm going to show you is not just to implement simple method to write some uh, line in the uh, command line. I want to show you that uh, you can make your sender configurable. So you can specify some properties for it. And to do that, you just uh, introduce some private fields. So let's create some string field called cool property that uh, its actual value that it would use we specify in a scenario in the XML. You will see it in a moment. So, And it works like, like usual uh, Java beans. So uh, it's sufficient to write a setter and getter, and automatically you can configure the properties in the scenario XML file. Uh, as you can see, perfcake is written in Java. <laughs> not mentioned that at the beginning, but our intention is uh, to find some ways to allow other languages for the extensions or plugins as well, because uh, it should not be difficult to uh, allow Python using Jiten or Groovy or uh, JRuby or something like that, so you should be able to uh, develop the, the plugins in your preferred language and uh, not be ba bound to Java. So this is how we, uh, I will add the value of the property into the string that is, writ that is uh, written on the standard output. So that is where we use the actual property. And there are some there, there are some properties that are uh, common for each uh, sender. Uh, right now, the most important or the important thing is a target, which uh, tell uh, which tells the sender where it should uh, send the message to. So you can get it by just it's uh, it's, it's uh, an ordinary property. So. You can use. It's the attribute of the abstract sender. Yeah. So you can you can use. Uh, yeah. But I think we should move on because of the time. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, so I will I will I, I will uh, I will show how to build a plugin and how to how to uh, how to. How to catch 
Uh, yeah. So if you want to build uh, build a plugin, just you just use Maven. So Maven package. Yeah, that's it. You can write test for it. You can test for it in the in the uh, desired framework. And now here, this is this is the plugin jar that we will use to uh, you would use to deploy to PerfK. So and now let's move to MongoDB sender yeah. uh, that we developed previously. So we, uh, we follow the same steps to develop the MongoDB sender, which is looks like his, this. And Martin will uh, comment it. Comment it. Yeah, except, uh, let me see. Exit for some of the properties that are automatically configured from the configuration file, which we, we will sh see later. Uh, scroll down, please. Uh, here are the, those three important methods. The initialization, we just uh, parses the target address, uh, finds out whether the port was specified, and opens the Mongo client using uh, Mongo Java driver. This is the project used to uh, communicate with MongoDB in Java. Uh, it connects to the database. It tries to authenticate if credentials were specified. Close method closes the client. And scroll down, please. Uh, the do send method reads the message line by line and executes the command on the database. So it's pretty straightforward. Nothing complicated. That was enough to uh, provide uh, a mean to PerfK to communicate with MongoDB. Uh, two important things. Uh, this sender has a dependency on a third party library. So uh, now I will show this you. had to be specified in the POM XML. Yes, I will show And you. installed in PerfK as well. So Pavel will show us. So this is how how the POM for the MongoDB sender looks like from the per, uh, there is the, this dependency on the Mongo Java driver that Martin, Martin mentioned, and it's pr pretty much uh, all that is uh, edit in addition. So now we will, uh, I will show you uh, to deploy a plugin with dependencies. You need, uh, we have uh, two uh, directories in the libraries. Versus plugins. Uh, by the way, this is the binary distribution yeah. of RK that can be downloaded on a web page. Yeah, so in the root, in the root you will find a lip, lip, uh, directory, and in in it there are two other. So the plugins is the directory where you uh, place the plugin itself, and the X directory is where you uh, place the dependencies for it. So we, we, now we, uh, here we have the Mongo uh, Java driver. So now we can try to test. run the test, Bob's, Bob's test, uh, just uh, against the MongoDB uh, uh, database. Show the XML, the configuration for scenario. Uh, the uh -huh. Bob scenario needs to be slightly different because we need yeah. to uh, use the MongoDB sender instead so, of the HTTP sender. So this is, this is the original Bob's scenario that uses HTTP sender, and we modify it. Uh, to use MongoDB sender. So as you can see, it's it's pretty much the same. There, there is not, not, not much of a difference, yeah, it's except just for the, the Mongo sender and there. the database name is here. And uh, the message is, is uh, different. Mm -hmm. Can you and show the message? Yes, and the message is the command for for the... for the MongoDB. Yeah, this is the where you can, where you can see command. the message number uh, property, which is the thing that is filled by the message numbering system in generator. Yeah, this is the this is the thing I mentioned at the beginning that Bob wanted uh, each message to have a unique number. So this is where the unique number gets in in the message. So now we can we can run it. So. Yeah, so uh, we use uh, three parameter, one parameter S, which is the name of the scenario, and then we place two uh, system properties for uh, where we uh, place the actual values that are filtered in the scenario. 
as you the, this was the number of threads configured mm -hmm. in the scenario and uh, the length of the test in milliseconds yeah let's start MongoDB sender server oh, sorry spot key presentation I will show you how, how to run it. So just run it, and it's already running. And it's reporting the average throughput uh, into the co console and to the CSV file, because we specified two, uh, two destinations. So now, so the original plan was that test to run for a longer time, so we do not have to wait for the test to finish. We have the cake ready. And uh, here is the result of the MongoDB test. Uh, we already run it in uh, before the presentation, of course. And as we can see, the throughput uh, is still the same. There is not the drop we saw in the original results. So we can say that the database is not the culprit, which we actually expected because MongoDB is a quite good database and verified by, by many users. And we can have a look on the uh, memory problems. So this is our demo number two. Uh, we will add memory usage report, uh, which is a stuff that uh, shows us the, the memory consumed by the application that's being measured and run the test again. What we will add on is uh, memory de detection. We have a special algorithm that uses linear regression analysis to find out uh, whether the um, memory can, can, or whether there is a memory leak, basically, if, the, if there is some, some increasing trend in the memory usage. So. Okay. so what we will do is to uh, go back to the original Bob's sender, uh, scenario, sorry, and to add the memory leak, uh, sorry, memory usage reporter. So the scenario would look like this. So as you can see, this is the part that we've added. Yeah, there is one more thing, the memory usage reporter. We have a memory direction enabled and some, some parameters tweaked uh, for the uh, memory, uh, memory leak detection algorithm. And we report uh, the results of memory usage reported to another CSV file. Yeah. to push it? Okay, so let's, let's run it. It's basically the same, just specify another, uh, the different scenario name, which is Mongo test. MU, like memory usage. Uh, let's hope it works. It's, ah. yeah. The memory uses, uh, usage isn't showed here because we've just uh, configured it to write a <coughs> CSV file. So we can find it here. Memory usage. Yeah, and these are the values of memory consumed. Yeah. But the, the, again, the, 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 to the presentation, we have the mm -hmm. chart there. Yeah, so again. We, we just imported the file in the LibreOffice and prepared the chart of it. So this is the chart from a, a longer uh, running test. and. This is the original line of throughput, as we can see the drop here, and this is the line showing the uh, memory used. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, everybody of you is familiar with the Java memory model, but there is a thing called garbage collector that can, uh, or that uh, should release the objects that are not, no longer referenced from, from your code. And as we can see here, where the drop is, where it starts, the garbage collector is not able to release uh, any more memory and the line goes slightly up, up, up. Because so CPU is <laughs> occupied by garbage collection. Yeah. Uh, so this way he proved that, the, uh, that there really is a memory leak in the application. And uh, I can tell you that there is because we implemented it <laughs> in it. It was 
not easy in Java. It's hard to write the memory leak, but we managed it. Uh, one more interesting thing I would like to show you, because on the last presentation there was such a question uh, how fast perfcake is or what is the overhead. So we measured that. Actually, the test was run on some commodity hardware, Lenovo T520, which is it this laptop. On this laptop. Yeah. And uh, it has slightly more memory, but it does not play uh, any major role in here. And uh, there's one thing: as uh, we we generate the load for the target system in multiple threads. We usually have a, have a queue of prepared tasks for that. And the length of the queue uh, limits the maximum speed of the test in a way that uh, the queue is, is pre-filled every second. So you cannot have more iterations per second than, there, than, than is the length of the queue because you can use all the, all the tasks that are prepared in one second and then need to wait for, for another. So in ideal world, if you have the queue of length, let's say uh, 100,000 tasks, the maximum throughput of perf cake is 100,000 tasks. Uh, if there was no overhead uh, introduced by perf cake, which is almost true until some, some point in here where there is, uh, this is the difference between the expected performance and the reality. Uh, so somewhere between here and here, the overhead of perf cake uh, starts to be significant. So currently on this hardware, we are able to safely generate something around uh, 200,000 requests per second, which is quite enough for most of the applications we tested with it. Uh, the size of the message is quite a different thing. Uh, it does not, uh, or this is, this is just the theoretical throughput of perf cake, of the framework itself. So uh, for you not to, be, not to be concerned that perf cake puts some or influences the results. As I mentioned at the beginning, we aimed uh, to have minimum influence on the measured system. Uh, we know what is the root cause. Uh, what is the root cause of uh, these two high columns, and we are actively working on it. And we believe to cut it further down for Perfcake to be able to generate even more requests per second, even on some hardware like this. Uh, now, future development. Uh, we have some some support for uh, IDE. Uh, in planning, there are actually two students working on plugins for Eclipse and IntelliJ IDEA for you to be able to easily configure the scenarios in uh, some nice graphical user interface and not to have to write the XML file. Uh, we prepared a plugin repository for plugins like MongoDB Sender and some, I don't know, interesting reporters. Uh, Documentation is a big pain, yeah. We still need to uh, finish the developer's guide and build a community. So we want you to come in and provide your plugins and all your cool stuff. Actually, if you want to uh, improve your Java skills, don't hesitate, have a look on GitHub. Uh, we have the links yeah, here. Uh, have a link on GitHub on issues, try to find some issues that are with the cake tag, which means that they should be pretty easy to fix and you can try to implement them. Uh, you can follow us on GitHub or on Twitter, uh, subscribe to our blog, anything you want. This QR code is a uh, URL of uh, this presentation on, on Google Drive, which you can access. Here are the resources used for the demos. There are all the files uh, that Bob used for the presentation. Uh, the previous presentation we had at uh, Linux Alt uh, that uh, speaks about performance testing more in general. And that's it. Do you have any questions for us? Yeah? Can you use perfect in a distributed vision so that you can 
stress, for example, from uh, 100 computers yeah. uh, your servers? I expected that question. Uh, the question is whether we can use perfcake in a distributed environment. Uh, actually, there is nothing preventing it today, but uh, the individual instances of perfcake uh, do not communicate together. It's up to you to run them manually and or in some automated way. Uh, there is a plan to provide some clustering su support where you would just uh, enter the IP addresses of nodes where you can or where you have uh, ability to log in via SSH, for example, and control th those nodes from one center point from some master node and uh, also get uh, the uh, measured data at one place. So this is uh, under development, I would it's say. It's on our road roadmap, yeah. It's on the roadmap. Anyone else? Yep. Writing the scenarios in XML, that's the only way how I could define the scenario right now. Uh, the question was uh, whether the XML is the only way to define the scenarios at the moment. Yes, this is the only way to define the scenario. Uh, the Eclipse plugin looks promising right now. It has some you know, boxes and allow you some, some drag and drop actions. But the result is, again, the, the XML uh, itself. Uh, do you have any ideas for, for other formats, how to specify the scenario? Uh, I, I was uh, trying this with the Catlin tool, and uh, they are using uh, the ESL written Scala for mm -hmm. the scenarios. I see. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting idea, actually. Uh, yeah, the, the, the other idea is using some DSL language to specify the scenario. Uh, we can have a look on it, definitely, because I do not see any obstacles why we should not support it as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, can you show some nice Oracle reports from, or is it just the CSV files then, uh, which you process them? Uh, what's the situation right now about the chat? Uh, right. we, we definitely have a, have a plan to uh, implement some, some reporters that or, or destinations that uh, create the charts immediately yeah. without the necessity to use the CSV file, but uh, it's, it's right not now, finished. Right now it, we support console as we, uh, CSV file and uh, look for J appender, but uh, uh, there's nothing to prevent to write a plugin that should uh, you, you could define your own destination, so it can be, it can be a SQL database, it can, it can be a chart generating class or whatever. So some destination that would use the uh, J free charts would be definitely interesting if anybody wants to implement yeah. it. So I, we have a plan to uh, uh, extend uh, the CSV generator to uh, generate a, a class uh, charts. Uh, by the way, I did not repeat the question. The question was whether we support some uh, direct chart generation. Oh, okay. Oh, cool, cool. Any other questions? So now the challenge. Is it on computers? We can test its performance. So if you have troubles with something, don't hesitate to contact us and tell us about your problem, and we can try to test it. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, by the way, one thing, uh, uh, if you had any feedbacks for the presentation, it would be great if you can post it. Uh, here, is the, here is the link.